We could test kidney medicine on this. Or we could test it on this. We could test heart medicine on this. Or we could test it on this. We could test lung medicine on this. Or we could test it on these. According to Humane Society International, 115 million animals are used in lab experiments worldwide. But what if they didn't need to be? What if we didn't need real organs to test drugs? These are organs on chips. I'm Daisy Rosario, and I'm on a mission to find tomorrow. Today, I'm in Boston at Harvard's Wyss Institute for Biological Engineering. Since 1950, the number of approved drugs in the U.S. has been decreasing, even though we're spending more money than ever on pharmaceuticals. And before drugs can be given to any actual human beings in a clinical trial, they have to go through a lengthy process of lab and animal testing. This is Don Ingber, a cell biologist and bioengineer. He's not the biggest fan of the drug development industry. Right now, they'll spend 500 million easily, or billions, 15 years, get to the clinical trial, have many thousands of patients, and fail at the drug development models broken. But Dr. Ingber likes a challenge. When Dr. Ingber was at Yale, he was studying molecular biology, but there was something else that caught his eye. There were students walking around campus with structures that looked like jewels or, or geodesic dome type structures. And I asked, you know, what, what was that? And they said, oh, it's in an art class. I said, what's the name of the art class? And they said, three-dimensional design. He talked his way into that art class by explaining to the professor that those sculptures reminded him of something. I was learning that at the level of molecules, it's the shape of the molecule that dictates its function. So on the first day of class, the professor hands out some wooden dowels and fishing line, and he tells the class to make an object out of them. But the sticks can't touch. You could only pull them up into a 3D shape by strings, and it has to hold itself open. The professor left. At first, nothing happened. But all of a sudden, Somebody who must have seen one of the sculptures of Kenneth Snelson, who built these structures called tensegrity, tensional integrity, built a three-stick structure, and it's kind of wild. It's like you don't think it's possible. The professor also had another model out, one that could collapse and pop back into shape, just like the molecules Dr. Ingber had been studying. So the next day, he went back to the biology department. And we used a drug that caused the shape to change, and I said to the postdoc, uh, oh, the tensegrity changes. So Dr. Ingber took what he learned in art class and applied it to his studies in the lab. Tensegrity became the basis of his career, and it led him to organs on chips. So here's an example of how a lung on a chip is used. Here in the middle, there's this tiny, tiny channel that can be filled with fluids. And at this small scale, fluids behave in some interesting ways. There's even a special name for it. Microfluidics. In these tiny channels, fluids don't mix with each other. They stay separated by a small membrane, but they can still interact with each other. Scientists fill one side with air and the other with a liquid that simulates blood. On the blood side, there are real living white blood cells. On the air side, there are human lung cells and bacteria. The air and the blood pass through the channel, and while that's happening, the sides expand and contract. This simulates breathing. And these are the kinds of forces Dr. Ingber was talking about. Turns out this is a pretty accurate representation of a lung, which is amazing. It means that cells in these tiny chips are interacting with each other like they do inside a real human. And this has some far-reaching benefits. This is Geraldine Hamilton. She's the president of Emulate, a company trying to use these chips to fix the broken pharmaceutical industry. The current ways of testing if a drug is going to be safe or if it's going to work, if it's going to be efficacious, involve either cells in simple dishes right. or the use of animal testing. That means subjecting animals to the dangers of untested drugs. Many of those tests don't even predict how the drugs will work in humans, which can lead to the drug failing in clinical trials. The great thing about the organs on chips is that you could work on the mechanism of how it works on human, as opposed to work years on mouse and then find out it's different in human. And that could help speed up the development of drugs and identify problems with them much earlier. This could be crucial in the case of an outbreak or an epidemic. On top of all of that, most drugs are developed to be one size fits all. That's not always the best approach. Organs on chips could help change that. In the future, it could be your cells uh, on the chip. I'm not just going to do a drug that treats 100,000 people, all of whom are potentially quite different genetically and their environments are different and so forth, but it's personalized to you. Of course, clinical trials still require time and care to get it right. 
After all, making sure drugs are safe in humans is the whole reason the process exists. But if organs on chips can help speed up that process at all, or bypass putting animals at risk, they could be really beneficial. There are other groups in California, Germany, and Israel working on this kind of organ simulation too. But Emulate and the Wies Institute may be uniquely suited to develop a mainstream solution. There's a vibrant blend of hard numbers and creativity, where scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs are all excited about solving big problems. At this institute, you have the right people, the right materials, some funding, and any crazy idea, if you can get other people excited, it does, just happens on its own. It's equally invigorating and, and exciting for me because I just love the creative process. And it's that creative process, that entrepreneurial spirit, this mix of art and science that could phase out animal testing and a whole lot more.